The increase in child support she wanted was shot down. Walking out, she was asking me through tears, how could you do this to me? what's going on everybody hope everybody's feeling good hope everybody's doing well we are back with another story guys i will put the link to this in the description like usual you guys read the title let's get into it so be careful what you wish for pro revenge this is a mix of revenge and malicious compliance hopefully this is the right place background kind of long but also important. So I am happily divorced dad of two beautiful kids, a five-year-old girl and almost four-year-old son. My ex and I met in my home state of Illinois. She was a Navy brat. Her family is from Texas. We fell in love very quickly, got married after a year and was expecting my daughter after three months. We found out she was pregnant with my son almost four to six months after my daughter was born. A month after he was born, I found out she was cheating on me with at least five guys. Later, found out it was around eight. Obviously, I filed for divorce. Man, oh man, those babies might not be yours. I got the lawyer, changed my banking accounts, and presented her with papers. The first copy was rejected for a reason I can't quite remember. Upon revision, I had my lawyer also change the custody from me having the kids every other weekend to every single weekend. Much, much to his surprise, she signed it. We shared the kids accordingly. She was super pissed, but there was nothing she could do about it. And when she and I could no longer afford to li live in the state, she moved back to Texas. Fast forward two years without seeing the kids. Couldn't afford to see them except on one Christmas day. I got out of the Navy, moved back home, and I got the kids for three months. I was appalled by their development delays. Both kids were rated in the bottom 5% of kids their age. My daughter didn't even have a clue about potty training at three, barely speaking, and no awareness of adult authority. Oh man. My son was not even close to walking non-verbal, wouldn't eat most meats, and was afraid of grass. When I returned them, my daughter would listen to adults, was potty trained, and speaking in almost complete sentences. My son was walking, saying some words, hand signals, and eating a variety of different foods. I worked my butt off to get them there. Also spent a lot on two times a week therapy for both of the kiddos. Money well spent, absolutely, man. Absolutely. You got to get them developed early. You got to get them right. And you, you're the only one that seems to care about that. She's raising these kids and she doesn't even seem to care. That's disgusting. That's sad. That's sad. Anyways, I stayed in Illinois for about one, one and a half to two years, gathering up enough money to move to Texas. I had a little amount saved, but I started dating a girl who I came to find out was also wanting to move to Texas. So we pulled our money together and moved down. Almost done with the background, guys. We got down to Texas and lived out of hotels for around a month. Found jobs, found a place, and moved in. I worked in a sales position in a large bulk type store. And my girlfriend worked at a sandwich place. At this time, my ex and I are not going by the divorce decree custody days because of convenience. Well, a person ended up quitting the job and I had to take their hours. So my girlfriend got permission to bring my kids to her work. The GM loves them. Well, they were being toddlers and she texted a mutual friend of my ex and me asking if she could watch the kids for a few hours. That got sent to my ex. My ex and her new hubby got ticked off and they came to my work and chewed me out saying that I need to take the kids while being more seriously. Roger that effers. Now I realized I messed up that day. I was not mad at what they said. I was ticked at the fact they did that in front of my trainee, a customer, and co-workers. Malicious Compliance Revenge
During my setup phase, I was not paying my full child support, which was kind of them, but that ended because I was now taking things more seriously. The next morning, I talked to my boss, told him what happened, and informed him that I could not work at the time specified on my divorce decree, because now that I am taking things seriously, I will now have the kids every weekend. I then transferred my ex the remainder of the child support, informed her that she was right and I needed to take things more seriously, so I will be by after work to pick the kids up after work for my court-appointed custody. She was confused but agreed. Then I called her on Friday evening to see if she has everything prepared for the weekend stay. Medications for my son. She flipped out saying they have plans all day Saturday and church Sunday morning. And she screamed, what the F are you making these demands all of a sudden? Well, I'm just taking the kids and our agreements more seriously. I ended up letting them have the kids Saturday and pick them up Sunday morning. I then informed my ex and her hubby that we would need at least a week's notice for any change in plans on weekends in case we had things planned. Generally, if they wanted to do something special with the kids, if we didn't have any plans, even at the last minute. Since I was taking things more seriously, my girlfriend and I kept very meticulous records of any injury, diaper rash, and physical appearance upon pickup. We would treat said rashes, note any changes in our little black book, them take a photo of the pages with a timestamp. When they returned, we would, we would then note any worsening of any rash, injury, or non-treatment. We also signed the kids up for more therapy since they are still very much behind. This went on for a few months until, surprise, my ex had enough and brought me to court to force the changes she wanted. I presented the judge with everything, the doctor's notes I had from day one, the doctor's notes from my ex with conflicting information, these notes were things we would tell the state-funded therapist for my son, as well as all the expenses for the therapies I was giving my kids. Then I showed her our notes, the printed timestamp photos, and the many times any rashes would be present or worse when I got the kids. My ex broke down into tears since she brought her entire family and several friends for her support. The increase in child support she wanted was shot down and instead was almost cut in half since I was making less than I was prior. The expenses I have for the kids and my overall time with the kiddos. The change in custody she is so desperately wanting, well, the judge ordered it to stay the same with the change of alternating Sundays. Slightly annoying. Walking out, she was asking me through tears, how could you do this to me? To which I replied, I was taking things with the kids more seriously. He has some edits here. Let's check out these edits. Edit number one. I have never restricted my ex from the kids. If she wants to have them for whatever reason and I have no plans, I let her have them on my time. Yes, they are my kids. I don't need a paternity test. Even if they weren't, I would have claimed them as my own. The love I had for them even before birth is about is above everything else in the world. For all you effers who are trying to say I neglected my kids but not seeing them for two years, I was in the Navy. I tried to see them but my leave kept getting denied because of my medical BS. I FaceTimed with them every day. I requested to say goodnight to them whenever I was able to. If you have ever been in the military, it is hard to understand how hard it is to get leave. I didn't relocate immediately to where the kids were because of the 24k marital debt I was paying off. I was paying roughly $700 to that per month. I will take responsibility for the 10k of the spending. Once I had enough to survive two months without work, I moved down. That way I knew I could take care of my kids in Texas. The time I was in Illinois, I was living with my parents. Wow. Let me get my thoughts on this. I always say, man, it's it's really sad to me when I when I read stories and there's kids involved, you know, um, kids have, having to be split up, you know, can't see daddy every day, can't see mommy every day, whatever it is, whatever the situation is, their life gets interrupted in a way. And no matter the age, they're young, they 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 they're they're taking stuff in still. It's just hurtful, man. Um. 
but you have to be careful, man. You, you got this woman pregnant. You married this woman and found out she was sleeping with eight different dudes. And those are just the guys you found out about. Eight different guys? Man, it, it, it's sad. I, I see why people in the comments. Actually, I even thought that these might not be your babies. But you said, hey, these are my kids. It, it, I don't. Even if I took a test and it said it wasn't, they're my kids. I mean, some guys are like that. Some people are like that. So, but man, it's, it's just sad because there is a very, very, very strong possibility that these kids are not yours and you're going through a lot, a lot for kids that aren't yours. You know, you, you ended up with this woman who is just disgusting and nasty. It's a disaster, man. And with stories like this, man, I I tend to just wish the best for the children. She's crying because she wants more money. Here's the thing. Like, she knows the situation that you're in. Like, you're trying to get a good job. and You're working. You say you were working at a sell, working sales at a store. And she doesn't care. Why is she trying her best? To, well, he needs to figure out where to get this money from, and that's what I don't like about a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of these situations where the woman is, she doesn't care if he can survive or, or not. She don't care if she ha if he has to sleep in a car. She just wants more money. It's just because she wants to punish him. I want to punish you, um, but it didn't end up the way she wanted, you know. Um, and he's doing everything by the book. You know, he's following the rules. He's, he's following the judge's orders. He's doing what he's supposed to do. And she doesn't like it. You know why? Because he's not suffering enough. He needs to suffer. When it's over, when the relationship is over, she's looking like he needs to be down bad. I don't care. I need to be doing great. He needs to be doing bad. That's basically what it is. And it, it's very, very unfortunate. But uh, let's go ahead and check out the comments here. Someone said, she she was asking me through tears, how could you do this to me? Um, Someone called out something else. I found out she was cheating on me with five guys. Later found out it was around eight. Yeah, that's just... Ugh. Um, It's amazing, isn't it? How could this happen to me? They never really want the answer to that either. Someone said, this is more common than you think for military spouses. What's that? The cheating? Yes. Seen more of that crap in my short time in than the 15 years since I got out. Yeah, mostly the cheating, but also the hypocritical attitude when they feel slighted. Real question. Is that because in America the soldiers are held up like heroes and they are the heroes' wives, so they are entitled as F? Um, someone responded to that and said, not really. It's mostly because of the loneliness. It also has a lot to do with maturity. Most military guys get married really young, 18, and being gone six months out of a year can certainly put a strain on a marriage, yeah. They also marry quickly. They also marry quickly, as in they've known the girl for six months. Kind of hard to know someone in just less than six months. All of that combines into increased levels of cheating. Extremely common so much so that the U.S. Military Justice Code has a whole section on divorce and marriage. It's also common for a wife to get knocked up by one of her flings while her husband is on deployment to be several months pregnant in hopes her husband will assume it is his. This really works because most people can figure that out, or at least their friends do. A church I went to had it happen so often that the priest did a whole sermon on how Joseph basically had a wife that was pregnant while he was gone, and he just accepted the kid as his own. So be like Joseph. Don't be like Joseph unless you are absolutely sure about having a kid that you know isn't yours. It will cost you severely financially more than people realize until the kid is 18. Yeah, or even older. Even older sometimes. Someone said that might be a part of it, but a lot of it is that they get lonely when their husbands are deployed half the year or more and they seek the company of other men and justify their promiscuity by saying that they wouldn't have done so if their spouse were not away. I've seen it happen to dozens of people I served with. Absolutely. You guys, we read these stories, right? Over the years, the stories that you've heard where the husband 
works out of town he has to travel what's the wife doing she's cheating whether she's a stay-at-home wife or she works the husband works and the wife works they both go to work she's always cheating with who the co-worker or cheating with somebody you know why because it's time apart it's time apart for some reason in their heads time apart means i need to seek someone else this is my opportunity to get someone else no matter what when you're not around her is you may as well just just, just assume that she's cheating that is so sad. Isn't that sad? Seriously? Like, you can't spend eight hours away from her without her thinking or considering cheating. That's ridiculous, man. Someone said, yes, they feel entitled to his benefits. If a restaurant offers a discount to, act, to active duty soldiers, she wants the man the same discount. His ability to use the post exchange departments, she wants it as well. His hazard duty pay for his year in the Middle East. She wants that too. And if she gets antsy while he is away, she wants to be able to duck whomever. Absolutely. Absolutely. She has every right to in her eyes. I'm lonely. I'm sitting here by myself. Oh yeah, she's going she's gonna to get her back blown out. Someone said, what I'm sad about is the kids. The three-year-old was not potty trained. And couldn't speak in which they should be able to absolutely the son is five and is afraid of grass i'm just worried about them having a normal life yeah me too man i, I was sad about the kids too man and on that note guys let me know what you think about this in the comments wow i'll put the link to this in the description like usual and i'll catch you guys at the next one